Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, slaying cardboard with three favorites. A new Jack Wolf knife prowls the collection. And as I prep to fly to Atlanta for Blade Show, we'll talk about great folders under 100 bucks. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back. My favorite comment of the week was by Yakalope, and he was commenting on last week's show uh, where the topic was, if you have one fixed blade in your collection, he says, much love and respect. But to only look at an older fixed blade like Buck 119, a K-Bar, a Doug Ritter fixed blade, and to only use the knife in your backyard. Now, I'm no expert, but I would rather use my WCSK, I looked that up, that's William Collins Survival Knife, or an LT Wright, maybe a Habilis Bush Tool. By the way, Doug Ritter is a saber grind. Thanks for the video. But dang, bro, the Spyderco was designed for self-defense. Now, I, I like this comment for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, it got me thinking. Uh, first of all, I needed to stipulate a little stronger uh, what, what I was going for uh, in that. And that was if you have one fixed blade in your collection. Uh, collection sort of implying that you have a collection of folders, uh, but you want to expand to fixed blades. So obviously, you're not much of a hard user. You don't need that fixed blade. Uh, so you know, what do you get as a, as a point of, as a knife of interest? And I had a lot of somewhat robust knives in there and then some, some like the uh, street Bowie, uh, which is a self-defense. So I was figuring this is for someone who doesn't need a fixed blade, but just wants one around. Um, so next time I'll, I'll stipulate something, you know, the topic, maybe a little more finely, but another reason I love this is that he introduced me to William Collins survival knife. Now, I have a feeling it's related somehow to my Collins machete, this uh, this uh, old machete from World War I, Spanish-American War era uh, that my brother got me. Uh, but these William Collins survival knives are, are beautiful and uh, exotic looking, and but very practical looking too. They have one called the, um, what is it called? The uh the the sane tracker or the the practical tracker or something like that and it's sort of alluding to the fact that that sort of dan brown tracker blade is a little crazy uh here is a tame version of that that actually uh well works better anyway anyway so uh thank you yakalope uh food for thought for sure and uh yeah it's true i i do pretty much only get use with my fixed blades in my backyard Sometimes I'll sneak them into the park and chop down a sapling. But, you know, uh, thank you for the comment and thanks for watching and listening. All right. Pocket check. What am I carrying today? Uh, you know, every day it, it's sort of a go to the cabinet or the, the craftsman tool chest. And what am I feeling? And today I was feeling a Rick Hinderer knife. I was also feeling this hollow grind. Uh it's funny that uh, Rick Hinderer came to mind this week. Uh, we have uh, on the podcast, we have Transparent Knives, Brian from Transparent Knives, and he's going through a little thing with them. Uh, and I'm pretty good at separating the artist from the art. Uh, so I I actually uh, still love my Rick Hinderer knives, even if there's some some weird action, some weird stuff going on in the, in the knife world with him. But uh, in any case, uh, beautiful, beautiful knife. This one was reground by... Uh, Josh at Razor Edge. So it is just about my sharpest knife. Um, I don't know. It, it, at one point, it was my sharpest knife. I've gotten a bunch uh, more since then, like the new Jack Wolf knives that are so thinly hollow ground. They'll give this a run for their money, uh, for its money. But uh, for a hard use knife, I absolutely love the, the XM series, the 18 and the larger 24, but I always thought the Spanto needed that hollow grind. Now, I think the originals, the um, customs were hollow ground with that flat ground tip for penetration. So uh, I had that uh, redone and this will never leave the collection now. By the way, that's an aftermarket, uh, well, it's a, it's a hinderer scale, but it doesn't come... Um, it doesn't come native to, to any models. It's a sort of a, a, a maroon, 
uh, micarta, milled micarta with the with the classic pattern in it. So one of my favorite knives, one of my all time favorites, uh, that Spanto Reground Hinderer XM18. That's on the old on the old pivot system, so it's just a uh, a weak detent and uh, and a and Nylatron washers. All right, next up, I had the Hog Tooth Knives Tanto Tanto. Sorry, I'm I'm saying Tanto from now on. The Hog Tooth Knives uh, Tanto on me. This is an EDC. This is this is a tremendous knife. I love this thing. Now I have two knives from from Matt Chase and Hog Tooth Knives. One of them is by far my most expensive and exquisitely uh, hand built custom uh, fighter. Um, loveless fighter double edged uh you know with the with the with the stag handle and and the damascus blade that then thing is incredible on the other side of his spectrum is this 154 cm water uh you know water jet cut uh blank you know this is a, a knife of his design he has it uh water jetted out a few at a time and then he makes them and they're great great edc knives i saw that he's gonna He's starting to put different blade shapes on, which is exciting to me uh, because this is one of the most carryable uh, fixed blades I have. I mean, on a daily basis, I can carry this. I can get a full four finger grip on it, but the handle is short enough and round enough that if I wear it in the waistband, which is where I carry it, it doesn't poke the ribs. It doesn't uh, poke my slowly disappearing uh, spare tire, which I appreciate. And um it's always, I mean, it's a very, very ready and capable blade. It's a hollow ground blade. And uh, I told the story about how I was once um, feather sticking for a family fire pit. And I brought out all of these really thin, slicey knives that I thought would do the trick. And they, they were all starting to worry me like they were going to, they weren't, they weren't performing. They weren't making the feather stick the way I wanted. And I was worried they were going to break either at the pivot or at the blade. I had this in my waistband, I pulled it out. This made incredible feather sticks. This is a great utility knife and could also be used in a pinch uh, in, to, to great effect as a as a self-defense knife. So I, I really, really love uh, the old hog tooth knives uh, Tonto. And it's about a three and a half inch blade, about three and a half inches, uh, a little bit less of cutting edge. Uh, and then last on me today, I had, oddly enough, a, uh, a front flipper. Uh, no, you think usually I'd have like a slip joint, but today I had the Sencut Bronte with me uh, just to play with, basically. I didn't use it, just kind of had it on me, and it was my my work fidget. It was my editing fidget, and this thing has gotten much smoother. Now, I, I don't know if you saw my close-up video on this, but I was shocked at how unsmooth it was or how how tight and bound up it seemed at the pivot very much, very unlike a Civivi. And uh, here, this uh, this did a great job uh, breaking in. I think it was probably uh, the coating on the blade, not the coating, but the blasting on the blade. I think there may have been some blasting on that blade that um, really needed to wear in a little trace with the with the bearings there. And uh, so great knife uh, this little send cut i love the shape of it now the the handle is a 100 percent neutral rectangle that's kind of fascinating to me uh it just proves yes we were, we're built on a platform uh that is optimized for holding sticks and this really <laughs> feels like a stick and then that blade just look at it if you can't see it it's a bellied worn cliff dramatic kind of sweeping uh cleavery clip front with a with a great fuller um so this is what I was carrying today. Let me know what you were carrying today. Put it uh, down in the comments uh, and let me know. It's a great way for me to figure out uh, new knives I want to get or uh, or also just to keep my, my finger on the pulse and uh, just to know what people are carrying. So drop it down below. Also, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell. That way uh, you'll get bothered every time I upload something, but you'll know. And that's important. Uh, okay, so this past weekend, I got a new grill. Uh, we were entertaining some of my wife's family in from out of town. And so we cooked up some ribs. And I had to get a new grill because my old one, the it just rusted. The bottom fell out. This happens, man. I didn't know this before I got a house and got a grill. But I seem to have to replace my grill every seven years or something like that. I don't know. Um, 
But anyway, got a new grill, put it together, and it came in a giant double-walled box uh, with tons of cardboard. So uh, this was my cardboard uh, experience of of the past weekend. It seems like spring comes and and there's a lot of these days. But uh, so I brought out three favorites uh, that I've been carrying a lot recently. Um, first was the CJRB, and uh, uh, this is the um, the Scoria. And this did great with the cardboard. This was really, really good with the cardboard and also just had a solid, solid feel to it. Uh, I was surprised because the action, there's a little bit of um, detent lash in this knife. So that means when it's closed, there's play in the detent. Look, listen, you can hear it. So that's that's still with it closed. It's just rattling. It's so it's like the detent hole is too big for the ball or whatever. So it always kind of feels a little loose to me. Um, but when it's open, it's rock solid. And uh, actually, I think I introduced a little bit of play into it yesterday. I was horsing it through some very uh, heavy cardboard. It did great. It's a very thin blade and very, very slicey and sharp. It came to me with a screaming edge on it. I think maybe the guy I traded with, uh, Chris, I think maybe he put uh, his own edge on it. It's very, very nice edge. Uh, so that did great. This one, uh, uh, the next one that I had on me, I've been carrying this one quite a bit. Uh, I uh, This was my carry yesterday. Uh, the Mini Pelican uh, by Kaiser Knives and uh, designed by K Maxrom. Great knife. It has great, uh, very thin cutting geometry and a, and a tall sort of uh, saber grind or flat grind there and it does really really well except that trailing point uh, kept i kind of kept feeling like i wanted a little more straight edge with this so this this does very well it does zip through cardboard even the thick stuff if you're going with the grain but uh i i kept finding it slipping off the the top and thinking this would be a fantastic worn cliff i know that uh other models of the K Max from Pelican and uh, his knives, he does do a sheep's foot uh, with a straighter edge. And I think in this model, it would it would serve well. I think it would do a, a great job with the with the rest of the blade geometry and everything else. And by the way, this N690 did great. It's still it's still razor sharp. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. Like it's not butter. You know, sometimes you start thinking about these steels and you're like, uh, you think they're just going to you know, after one use, they're going to dull out because we're so used to thinking about super steels, but no, it did great. Uh, and last up, my favorite all time cardboard cutting knife is the Steingraber performance knives shark. This is a custom knife. He does these in batches and now he's doing a folder called the Lamia. That is a uh, absolutely gorgeous, uh, titanium frame lock, very uh, nice and simple design, kind of uh, harkens to this. And he imports his his incredible thin blade geometry and incredible grinding into the folding format with that Lamia. This knife, the Shark, uh, really does live up to its name in two ways. First of all, uh, you know, as I have to do when I'm cutting up a lot of cardboard, I always stack it up thick and then I stab whatever knives I'm using and see how deeply and how easily uh, they penetrate. Um, that's just for fun. And this thing always goes right up to the handle. That shape really is like a shark's tooth. Uh, to me, it's it's evocative of a shark's nose and body as it slips through the water. But it, it must also be like a shark's tooth because it, it this thing all, always stabs very deeply. And you don't think of these kind of EDC blades as being stabbers necessarily. If you needed this thing in a pinch, of course, like any other knife, it, it would be uh, great. But this one might even excel. Uh, but in terms of cutting the cardboard, it's incredible. It slips through the molecules. It slips between the atoms. Uh, one way I like to use this knife, actually, is um, when I have a piece of cardboard that's about maybe two feet wide or 18 inches wide, and I need to cut it into strips, I like to hold it and pull towards me. Uh, I know I'm sure that's unsafe or whatever, but that's how I like to do it. And with this knife, when I when I push it through the cardboard and then pull it towards me, it looks like a fin swimming through the cardboard towards me. Uh, I'm not sure if you can understand what I'm saying, but the blade tip is up and the edge is towards me and I'm pulling the knife towards me 
to shear a piece of cardboard, you know, a, a slab of cardboard off a larger slab. And it looks like a fin swimming, swimming towards me through the cardboard. I think it's cool. Maybe I was just out there too long in the heat cutting cardboard, but uh, excellent knife and lives up to its name in many, many ways. So these, these were my cardboard slaying knives for the weekend, this past weekend. And uh, I, I would say this is the order of greatness. Uh, definitely the shark comes in first. Uh, the Scoria was second and the Kaiser mini uh, Pelican mini was third. So that's what we had. All right. So uh, coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to look at a, a new knife from Kombu and Best Tech. But before we do, uh, let me just say, if you like what we do here, please uh, check us out on Patreon. You do get extras. You get interview extras. So every interesting knife person I talk to, I get them to talk to me a little bit more. And, uh, and you can get that as a patron. You also get entered into uh, monthly knife giveaways, and there's other stuff too. So uh, just uh, zap this zap. Do I sell? Uh, scan the QR code; it'll take you right there, or go to theknifejunkie.com/patreon. I will read that very complicated address once again. That's theknifejunkie.com/patreon. Looking for a new knife? How about one from Benchmade, Spiderco, Wee, or Bark River? Get that new knife and support the Knife Junkie channel and save money on a new knife all at the same time. Visit our Knives for Sale page at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives for this week's specials. Through our affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on great knives. You save some money on your knife purchase, and the Knife Junkie channel makes a small commission, it's a win-win. Check out the new knife specials each and every week at www.thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. A knife that we spoke to Kombu about. We had Kombu back on the show uh, not too long ago talking about his new models with Best Tech and uh, hoping, he was hoping upon hope that uh, his new model, a big, big beauty, uh, the um, uh, it, it, that it would be coming out at Blade Show 2022. It's called the Fairchild, named after a Fairchild, uh, what is it, a water aircraft from World War II. Uh, Fairchild also, uh, I know they helped develop and make, at least earlier on, uh, the A-10 Warthog. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, uh, but Fairchild, of a, 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 a storied airplane company, he named this giant after that because this sucker is a giant. And I got to say, the, the shape of the blade is evocative of an aeroplane. Um, this thing has a 3.9 inch um, S35 VN blade. And ah, man, it is gorgeous. I can't wait to check it out. He's Kombu will be at the best tech table uh, this year. I can't wait to shake his hand. I have a lot of hands to shake this year and only uh, one and a half days to do it. Uh, but Kombu will be one of the first guys I seek out. Uh, I really look forward to meeting him in person. And uh, his his I, I really think he's got a great design mind. He's one of uh, I could I could list a number of people and he's one of them. He just has a very prolific uh, mind for designing knives and doing them in a certain way way with a certain look but each one looks different he reminds me a little bit of ken onion not just because of all the organic line work but because of his um uh, uh range within that style so uh check him out he's on uh, the knife junkie podcast episode 314 uh, just a couple weeks back uh kombu is and so he's very thrilled as is uh best tech that they will have this knife uh, ready for Blade Show 2022. I know it was up in the air when we spoke with him, uh, but here it is. So I can't wait to go check it out, get it in hand. And uh, and you know I love the large knives. And 3.93 inches is a great measurement for a blade. So we look forward to that. Uh, also, uh, I look forward to checking out, oh man, I'm just trying to think of all the time I'm going to need that I'm not going to have, but I would love to go check out the new CRKT collaborations. First of all, CRKT always uh, has a really nice setup. And I know this year, like, yeah, how do you know always has a nice setup, Bob? Last year was your first Blade Show. Yes, it was. But for years, I've been following the uh, the Blade Show videos from all of our favorite trusted voices on YouTube. And uh, I love the perusal of the CRKT uh, 
setup because they have things in, in glass and you can just kind of look at every model up close. Uh, this year they have a bunch of collaborations. Uh, this this um, uh, the first one that I want to talk about is the stickler. This is one that is from Jeff Park and it's very excuse me. It looks a lot like the crossbones and um, it's got this long streamlined uh, body. It's got the sort of uh, crossbones um sort of thing uh, oh not this one i'm sorry this this is a cool one here too this is a, a flavio icoma knife here that we have up on on screen uh flavio icoma who not only has a very particular design style that you can see here in the handle and in the blade when you when you see it blade open but if you look at the pivot area and if you're if you're not if you're just listening you can see on the back side of the pivot there's the long tab that belies the um the locking system that he created the bolt lock or the deadbolt system that he created and uh, is used exclusively on the CRKT knives. Now it's a, it's a uh, bolt lock that you push in. It's got two bolts or two pins that go through uh, the tang when open and locks it open. Uh, the, this little hand thing was very scientific. I know you, you totally got it from that, but to release it, you press it in, it's right at the pivot. So it, it kind of has the feel of a button lock though. The button lock being off axis off pivot, uh, almost, it, it does have a different feel. It's almost easier to, to get it to drop in. So that's the new one from Flavio Icoma. You go down from there and you'll see the, uh, Jeff Park, uh, the new Jeff Park knife that looks a lot like the crossbones and, uh, uh, has an interesting blade. The reason I'm stopping on this, the handle is a little eh to me. It's a little overdone. Uh, but that 12C27 blade, so that's a Sandvik, it's 3.3 inches. But look at it. It's got a look of a traditional uh, knife to me. It looks like a it looks like a machine ground swedge on a traditional uh, spear point blade with that long and and with a long machine cut pull. So it looks like the blade comes off of a uh, classic slip joint knife. And I kind of like that. Uh, and like I said, the handle, it, I, I think it's a little gaudy, uh, but interesting in that uh, it, it sort of is evocative of a melon tester knife. He calls it the stickler. Uh, of course, the blade at 3.3 inches is too short to be a, a melon tester, but melon testers traditionally are very long, slender slip joint knives with very long, slender uh, spear point blades. And the idea is a melon tester can test the melon by sticking the long blade down the, the center spine and how soft it is determines its ripeness. Uh, moving down, uh, something you didn't think you needed, an assisted home front. Uh, and then going further down, you can see the, uh, the Flavio Icoma knife. That's called the Attaboy. Uh, that's with the blade open. Pretty cool looking knife. I, I wouldn't mind possessing that and uh so some cool stuff coming out from them uh this ox cart uh, down below looks looks like someone's knife but i can't tell who let me know and then the the last one i want to take a look at is at the very bottom it's by james williams uh famed for his traditional uh quaken and japanese knives but this uh this axe here this um really cool tomahawk uh, with a very long beard uh, is off off the uh beaten path for him that's not the right term it's out of form for him i am so used to seeing his japanese inspired tactical folders and fixed blade knives that to see this sort of viking axe is thrilling not only because it's just undeniably cool looking uh, but also to to know that this is a guy uh, james williams is a you know expert many times over in japanese bladesmanship and so to see him turning his attention to a um, to a tomahawk, I think he knows what he's doing, and I'm sure he optimized this for uh, you know martial purposes. And I love that. But but not for nothing, you could you could uh, sneak your hand up from that gorgeous bird's beak termination of the haft all the way up to right behind the blade and have a four and a half inch blade or four point eight inch blade uh, right in front of your knuckles uh, to do all sorts of fine work like when you're making your long ship uh before your raid your spring raid uh you could use it as a sort of a draw knife so uh very kind of cool uh the skagox uh rolls right off the tongue skagox 
uh, designed by James Williams and coming out by uh, coming out this season from CRKT. Very much looking forward to that. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the new Jack Wolf knife. I'm very, very, very happy about this one as I have been with all the others. And then uh, headed to Atlanta to Blade Show, but this year I have to fly because I don't have much time, which means I'm not taking a bunch of great knives for TSA to Nick. So I am going to, uh, we're going to talk about some great knives under a hundred bucks right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Uh, got this from Jack Wolf Knives, Ben Belkin. Thank you, Ben Belkin, for bringing this to all of us. This is Ben's version of the classic boy's knife. This is the Jack Wolf Knives Little Bro Jack. And before, um, here, let's, let's go to the main shot just so you can hear the walk and talk. Um, you just got to hear this walk and talk. All right, there you go. Does that mean anything to you? You can't feel it, and and walk and talk is half feel and half uh, auditory, uh, half tactile, half auditory. This is uh, Ben's take on the sort of the number 15 size little bro. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's a, a Great Eastern Cutlery number 15. And I'm pretty sure that's his favorite. It's a sleeve board pattern. Um, and... Uh, it is my favorite size, and it is my favorite uh, Great Eastern Cutlery knife. Uh, they aren't the only ones who made this. Uh, and now this is his take. So it's the perfect, perfect size, and it's a clip point. Uh, let's see. So this is coming in at one, two, two and three quarters inches on that blade. That clip point blade is fully of it's a full height hollow grind, so all the way from the spine to that cutting edge is convex on both sides or concave on both sides. And it is so thin. I got to say, I think it is thinner than the laid back. And I think it is thinner than the sharpshooter. Both are very thin, high height, uh, full height, hollow grinds. But I got to say this one right here takes the cake. This, this is going to be my favorite. This is my favorite so far because it is already my favorite size. Um, though the uh, Swayback Jack, I, I admittedly said last time was my favorite. Uh, I do love it in terms of the pattern. But in terms of over, overall carryability and size, this, this is it for me. I just, I love it. All right. So, uh, one thing I want to show off in this clip point blade is the sort of tacit recurve. I'll explain what I mean. Okay, so if you look at the spine here, the spine goes straight across from the start of the clip, just uh, before the nail neck, all the way to the back. It's a straight line. So now look at the cutting edge. The way the cutting edge is straight, but reaches down and is not parallel to the spine, but but angles down towards the apex of the belly before it rises back up to the tip. Look at where it puts the tip. It puts the tip at the bottom, almost uh, the way you have the tip on a Warncliffe. Almost has it lined up with the bottom of the handle. Uh, so what's my point? My point is uh, where the apex of this belly is, down south of where the where the edge starts by the Ricasso, you get an incredible uh, sort of recurve action out of that as you're pulling the blade through whatever material you're cutting because you're not going to be pulling it parallel to the material you're cutting. If you were, you would get great cutting, but you are going to be holding it at an angle. So as you do that, this downward angle on the sharp on the forward edge is going to feed material more efficiently into that cutting cutting edge. Oh God, I don't know if I'm explaining it. I think you can see what I'm saying here, and uh, that's what I love about this style of um, of clip point. I really like the style of clip point that you see here on the. Um, on the sharpshooter jack, but it does not have that downward reaching angle. 
And to me, that downward reaching angle just equals more efficient uh, slicing and cutting. And you know, that's all I'm doing with these things day in, day out, 24 seven round the clock is just cutting and slicing and doing hard work with these things. Uh, of course, you know, I'm kidding, but if I were, uh, this is exactly what I'd be going for because that, that sort of downward canted uh, straight edge really, really feeds material efficiently into your, into your cutting path. So just a great little knife, man, and and uh, man, just a great knife. And you've got these integral liners and bolsters. The bolsters are not soldered to the liners like on most traditional knives. It is just uh, one piece per side of titanium milled with the with the uh, with the fluting on the bolsters. That's a little uh, that's a little knife uh, slip joint guy luxury touch there. And then that pocket milled out for the, in this case, natural canvas micarta. They also, he also offers green and black micarta. And then, and then with this run, a, uh, what is it? Copper dark matter fat carbon. Looks beautiful. All right. So uh, as, as all jack knives do, it comes in a very impressive tube. I left the tube across the room uh, with, with a pog and a sticker and a cleaning cloth and beautiful artwork from, from a bona fide uh, comic book artist and also one of these incredible slips. Uh, this is the one for this. I haven't even put the knife in the slip yet, uh, but the others that I've used are breaking in nicely too. I love a leather patina as well as a micarta patina and a carbon steel patina. All right, so that is the knife uh, that uh, that I got new in this week. Thank you very much. I love this thing. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned, going to Atlanta, cannot drive. When I drove last year, it was a thing. Like I, 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 it, I labored over what knives to bring because for some reason, I thought I had to <laughs> carry the knives of people I was going to be seeing. Oh, look, see, I'm carrying. A... I brought everything. I brought everything, including tomahawks and uh, uh, a Bowie. And so this time, obviously, with the flying and the turn and burn nature of this uh, trip, I am not bringing all that. I'm bringing I'm being very budget aware and I'm only going to bring I think I'm just going to do one just just to see how that feels. <laughs> so, uh, so it's going to be something under a hundred bucks. It's going to be something I can replace easily. It's going to be something that is currently available so that if I do lose it and uh, want to replace it, which I'm sure I will, uh, I can do that. Uh, so this, this is basically what it's going to be, except for two of them. Two of them I cannot bring because they are not mine. <laughs> One of them is a giveaway knife that was donated to the channel by Dave. And uh, the other one is a knife belonging to Hero Sticks, which I will be returning shortly. Uh, but these are great knives under 100 bucks. So let me start with the, the Citivian. This is the one that uh, was donated to the channel by Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And I'm going to be donating this one. I, I'm incredibly impressed by this knife. Uh, I've seen a few other Citivians, just gave one away uh, here. But this one... Man, it is really good. This is the Citivian S110. Now, I've seen a couple of other people uh, show this off. Uh, I think Bees Blades showed this off and some others and really uh, appreciated what an amazing knife you get for 27 bucks. 27 bucks. I mean, uh, this is something that could only come from China. Uh, it is incredibly incredible high quality great engineering this is d2 blade steel uh mismatched micarta uh darker on this side so it's like two different batches uh but great great uh axis lock style uh lock uh i'm i might uh, dare say better than many that i've experienced from other more reputable companies uh, sorry maybe not reputable but well-known companies um I'm very impressed and scared by this Sativian knife. Scared uh, that, you know, this this is now on offer from China for 27 bucks. Uh, but speaking in a vacuum, uh, this is an incredible 27 buck knife. Uh, and just a great knife in general, I would have to say. Um, 
yeah, the Sativian S110, that's D2 steel. It's thin, it's thin and very nice uh, cutter, though I haven't cut with it. I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I can, I can tell, you know, if you've got fingers and you can feel, uh, it is a very sharp knife and it does do nicely through paper. Uh, it does give you a little landing point here, but it's not a dedicated choil, which I kind of like. Um, but that is a very large sharpening choil there. And the grooves, uh, some some milling in the handle, uh, it's all very comfortable. And this right here is something I've been seeing on knives recently. Uh, Kombu does this actually on a lot of his designs. And it's a great place for your fingers to get purchased when they wrap all the way around the handle. Uh, deep carry pocket clip, kind of a beefy deep carry pocket clip, uh, big and shiny, but uh, really excellent knife and, and shocking at 27 bucks. Uh, I will not be bringing that one because it's not mine, uh, but easily could. I'm also not going to be bringing this next one, uh, but it is a an amazing 20 bucks. I spent 20 bucks on this, and that was an inflated price because I got it at REI. I'm sure it's, it's a little bit more now, uh, but it's the Gerber Zilch. And it's a knife that I've talked about a lot because to me, it it it's a harbinger of Gerber's return to goodness. Um, and they've had a number of other knives like the Sedulo, the Sedula that I had on this channel that is really excellent. Also a bar lock uh, like the Sativian. But this one to me is really, really great because it's 20 bucks or, or very inexpensive. Uh, I got it for 20, like I said. Uh, it's got it's a great platform here you're looking at some pretty cheap materials i think that's like 5 cr or some i can't remember what the blade steel is uh, they were embarrassed about it so i had to search uh so it's it's kind of a low grade blade steel but it's a great blade shape a great blind up uh, uh, grind very sharp has a nice fuller that you can use for spidey flicking it's got a uh, great uh, thumb studs and then the handle is really comfortable. It's ergonomic. It's got a, f a finger guard for forward uh, forward motion, which I appreciate. I I just I just do because I'm always thinking about that. What if I do have to thrust with this thing? Not just this, but all knives. Uh, it's got a uh, very good um, lo uh, lock access there, and very good ergonomics. It's just extremely cheap feeling plastic it's got this weird tooth thing in the back just for catching lint i'm not sure why they did that uh great pocket clip everything about this knife is great except the materials it even uh even the action is excellent 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 washer action so uh i see that they have a new knife out called the savvy which which takes a lot from this knife i think and is more designed for the enthusiast market but if you have a spare 20 bucks and and you you think uh, you want a, a knife that would be great to throw in the, the car or to leave in your bag or or the kitchen drawer that collects stuff. I call ours the junk drawer. This is a great knife for that. Uh, all sorts of little tasks around the house. Um, I will not be bringing this because it is not glorious enough, but I just have to say for under 100 bucks and this thing under 30 bucks, uh, this is a really good knife, and I do hope to see them take this exact knife and uh, really up the game with the materials. This would be awesome in Micarta and S35 or or even D2, something, you know, if you want to keep it real cheap. Uh, okay, next up is the Off-Grid Knives um, Enforcer EDC. I'm sorry. Next up is the Kubi Vagrant. I'll get to the, the Off-Grid next. Uh, but this one does come next. And this is uh, a $40 knife, and uh, I've been really impressed with this, so much so that I uh, got another knife by Kubi. So so almost any Kubi is basically going to fit this category. I like larger knives. This, this Kubi, called the Flash, is a 3.8-inch blade. Um, but for, the, for many of us who don't like the larger blades, I'm going to talk about the Vagrant. And... And everything I say about the Vagrant will uh, will go uh, will pass along to the Flash and probably every other Kubi because every other one I've experienced has been pretty damn excellent. Also, but this Vagrant is great because it is well, it's a Max Chichuk design. I like his designs. It's Aus 10 blade steel, which is a which is a very stout and sturdy, tough and sharp, um, which means you know 
a little bit softer, but it's tough and, and stays sharp. Um, budget steel used a lot by cold steel these days. This thing has a great design. You've got belly, you've got a tip down for a lot. Uh, I mean, a, a, a downward, uh, oriented tip. I don't mean tip down in terms of how you carry it. Downward oriented tip for a lot of great, uh, for a lot of um, uh, sort of utility cutting and stuff, but you have a really great looking blade. I love the way this blade looks. I love that it has a point. It's a great sheep's foot sort of blade, but it's got an excellent point. So if you're carrying one knife and you think of it as uh, one knife for everything, and you do need a point, if you're thinking of one knife for everything, this would be a good one because it's also uh, small. It's three and a quarter inches. Um, and so that's right in, in the, the size category that a lot of people like one, three, yeah, three and a quarter inches. That is a size category that a lot of people like. It's very handsome. It's got a great opening. I love that opening hole. You can slow roll it. Uh, I can't, I can't, I have a hard time not just spidey flicking it. It's like optimized for that. It's got a good clip. I think that's the clip they put on a lot of their knives. And um, nice liner lock and, and good girth. When you go small, uh, the way I see it anyway, when you go small, you need to add girth. Um, I An extreme example of that is this tiny, uh, what do they call this, uh, Rhino Mini. It's about as thick as a regular Rhino. And thank... Uh, I was going to say thank God, but thank Carrie for doing that because it still gives the, you this three finger knife, something chunky to hold on to uh, that that scales to this as well. This knife also could be excellent in reverse grip just due to the shape of the palm or uh, the pommel there. Great place to hook your thumb over if need be. So the Kubi Vagrant designed by Max Chichuk. There are two versions. Well, they have a bunch of different colors of G10. I like this Thunderhead blue. Uh, but they have a more sheep's foot style blade with less of a point and uh, it doesn't have this swale here. It has the opposite. It's like a hump. So two different blade uh, flavors and a bunch of different flavors of G10. So check out Kubi knives uh, if, you, if you're on a budget and you want some really, really excellent knives, high performing knives. I'd say Kubi seems to be fitting the bill. Okay, uh, next is the off-grid knives Enforcer EDC. Now, here it is. Uh, it is a bellied Warncliffe, or they, pro or or as most call it, uh, a reverse Tonto. That term makes me bristle, but I won't go down that road right now. Um, so I chose this one instead of say this one. Uh, off-grid knives has a number of knives under a hundred bucks. This one is a special edition. It is over a hundred bucks but you can get the large version of the Enforcer called the Enforcer XL uh, in just the plain black G10 with a D2 blade. This is 154 CM for under a hundred bucks, but it is big. That's a four inch blade. This is a big knife and, and it's got a lot of weight relief in the liners, but it's still heavy. It is a big aggressive knife to carry, but it's little brother, the Enforcer EDC has everything that blade has, but just in a um, much more pocket-friendly format. I, I, I should say, with the caveat, it does not come with that big glass breaker, but that's welcome on this knife. Now, uh, my XL Enforcer in D2 is my car knife for that purpose. It's got that glass breaker. Uh, but here, perfectly pocketable they even knock down the texture a little bit this has uh the enforcer series has a very aggressive uh texturing like fields of pyramids uh that come to acute points they knocked them down made this more pocketable you have a deep carry pocket clip with fully uh fully recessed pocket clip and fully flat screws um and then just this awesome awesome knife i mean uh blade design You've got, like I said, a little bit of belly, but not too much that if you're doing push cuts, it's going to slip off like a trailing point. You, Speaking of the point, you have an excellent stout point there for thrusting or, or penetrating, uh, you know, plastic and clamshells and rubber and stuff. This is just a great blade. Uh, all of these, this one is D2. 
they have a limited edition of this also in that red down 154 cm but uh all of the off-grid knives uh, and and like i said many of them are under 100 bucks but all of them are made by best tech and they are excellent excellent excellently made extremely tough uh hard use knives but also they're they are some of my absolute favorite uh cardboard cutting knives i've mentioned that a couple of weeks back when i talked when i did a show on that uh just before we move on here's another one that can be had from off-grid knives for under a hundred bucks if you like large knives like i do this is the cayman xl uh their their cayman edc at 3.15 inches in blade length came out first uh but he heard from a lot of people myself included that we all wanted to see that in a bigger format so he came out with a four inch version of that look at this thing for a hundred bucks or for under a hundred bucks and made by best tech with incredible silky smooth action and 14 c 28 n blade steel a great blade steel all right so off grid lots of offerings from off grid also lots of offerings from the next uh, company we're talking about Civivi. I have a, a bunch, well, not a bunch. I have a dwindling collection of uh, Civivis, I should say. I have sold and given away a few recently, um, you know, in <laughs> in the endless quest to get more knives. Uh, but this one, this is the Cogent, and I chose this for a couple of reasons. Um, I, I like all the Civivis I have quite a bit. Um, th as a matter of fact, I like some better than this, the ones with... Uh, my Carta appealed to me even more, but this is this nice maroon G10 in black. I like the way it looks, but I chose this because it's a clip point. I love this clip point blade. Um, they do a lot of great drop points and spear points and, and uh, not too many clip points. I love this because it, it's a very pointy, sharp, stabby blade with a nice swedge with that point right down center line with the pivot and the and the um and the tail the pommel there and this is the first and i don't know maybe the last uh civivi where they offered serrations so uh, and and it was their first button lock so uh i feel i felt compelled to get this when it came out for those reasons uh clip point from civivi serrations from civivi and button lock from civivi as you know this year the uh civivi and we has gone a hog wild on the button lock and 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 this first attempt though a little bit sticky was a really really great knife and so uh this has a lot to it this one in particular has a lot to it uh because of the serrations etc so this is a great choice for and might be my choice for atlanta uh just because it's an all-arounder if i need to fidget it's got the fidget factor uh like mad uh if i need serrations there they are i know i'll need a bowie so there it is a clip point because when don't you and uh and it's handsome so it might it might be the one to take and it's got great chimping but uh all civivis are great uh that i've uh, just because they have the whole knife making thing down uh in their format it's a matter of design and that's how a lot of these are. I, I don't know enough about Sativian to say that's the case. I certainly know that's not the case with Gerber. With Kubi so far, that is the case. You like the design, you know you're going to get a great knife. Same with Off Grid, who is made by Best Tech. So same thing with Best Tech. It's like you see a Best Tech made knife. If you like the design, you can almost rest assured it's going to be excellent. And if it's not, it's probably just that individual unit that's a lemon. Uh, so Civivi, all things... Uh, work for me but i'm going with the cogent all right next up this one uh i missed out on the first uh like season of them and then kaiser came back with them recently and i jumped on this uh this is the kaiser towser k um say that five times fast this is an azo design and it's got 154 cm blade steel and just such an amazing blade uh, that blade is a tall here. It's a great pencil sharpener. You might see uh, some lines on it. I've used this to sharpen pencils quite a bit, but it's got a very tall flat grind on this. What do you call this? It's sort of a reverse Tonto, uh, sort of a cleavery blade, um, sort of a pointed cleaver. I don't know, uh, but it's a great slicer. It's 
just a great slicer. Uh, and it's got incredible action. I mean, this action is um, the best on the table here and probably the best in terms of fall shot guillotine action. Um, definitely the best on this table or the most drop shutty. And I think maybe in my collection, it is the most better get your thumb out of the way. Uh, I got this for the uh, handle material. It comes in either uh, sculpted red canvas micarta or in this, uh, what is this, Bakelite? What is this called again? Oh, man, I'm forgetting what this handle material is, and I got it just for that. Uh, first of all, I love the color, and I really dig that milled-in pattern. It reminds me of something I'm not going to go into right now, but it reminds me of something I saw once, and uh, I, I really dig that. But also the material, Rich Light. It's called Rich Light. It's, uh, it's like a paper micarta kind of. Um, just layer, 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 but not of of textured material like canvas or linen micarta or, or something like that. It's more like paper micarta. Uh, anyway, wanted to experience that. Really like it. Wish they contoured it um, a little bit, but it is chamfered. And I do like that uh, that gazing into the uh, into the beyond material or uh, gazing into the beyond pattern they have in the material. Uh, very, very sharp and slicey, very sharp and slicey this is, and appeared in my Cardboard Slayers video uh, not too long ago. Kaiser Towser K can be had for 69 bucks, and that's a steal. Next one uh, is from a company that um, I have a little bit of experience with, but this, this one is my favorite of the ones I have experienced. This is a petrified fish. We gave one away here uh, not too long ago. This is the Beluga. We gave away a different model, but this Beluga has just stolen the hearts and minds of the, of the knife world. And it's no wonder. It is a very comfortable knife in hand, especially with that uh, denim micarta. Feels just great in hand. Simple, simple, but broad uh, ergonomics. That's kind of a tall handle. It fills the hand really nicely contoured uh denim micarta handle scales i'm i'm in love with denim micarta i love blue jeans i wear them all the time and i love micarta <laughs> so there you go i guess that explains my my love for it but you can tell uh, this is this knife belongs to my buddy hero sticks and it seems like it's gotten some use it it looks like uh he's put a bit of a patina on this on this uh, material and i just think it's gorgeous the blade is tall simple beautiful it's got a fuller that you can use for the finger flick uh it's got the um the uh front flipper here uh, i i really like this knife i think i have to get myself one i did order i went i went online to order one and then i saw they have this new bowie style blade out so i i ordered that one instead i'm waiting it's on the slow boat you know from china literally and uh, I've been just sort of watching it not not get here. It'll be it's supposed to be here soon. Uh, but in the meantime, I should pick one of these up, too. I love this beluga. This would be a great knife for the purpose of of what I'm doing, getting on an airplane, putting this in my uh, carry on or not my carry on, putting that in my check baggage and hoping that it's not stolen uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, because if you do show up with the knife, that's a cool one. That is a great, very capable uh, flat grind, slicey as hell, but also will get some appreciation. Let's face it. You, you, you like it when people are like, oh, nice, you know, nice knife. And in this case, you know, uh, anyway, I, I like that beluga. <laughs> Next up uh, is a concept knife. And this one could be any number of concept knives because I have a few of them and they're all excellent. Um, the one that I'm going to talk about is the Preta 2. And in this case, the um, liner lock micarta version. They have uh, a black one and this tan canvas one. And it comes in two blade varieties. Uh, this double peaked clip point blade or you get a double peaked uh, tanto blade. This also comes as a frame lock, uh, titanium frame lock. But since we're talking about knives under 100 bucks, 
this fits the bill in a very classy way. I think Concept Knives is one of my favorite Chinese uh, companies, one of my favorite companies. Uh, I, I really like the knives they produce. They are an another one of those examples of you like the design, you know you're going to get an outstandingly built uh, and engineered knife if you if you get it. Uh, what I like about the canvas, I'm finding myself carrying the micarta version more than the than the um, than the titanium version I have in Tonto. And one of them is because I have a really hard time using the thumb stud with that. I just really have a hard time with the frame lock and the thumb stud on that knife. I've seen other people use it just fine, uh, but for some reason with the way I do it, uh, I just find it easier without depressing, you know, you, there's no chance of depressing the lock in on this because it's captured inside that handle. Um, so, yep, here it is. Uh, I also love the fact that it has a fuller for that spidey flick, that middle finger flick, and then something very pleasing about the jimping in this uh, thumb swale here, this thumb ramp. Uh, another uh, very well-made knife that that fits, uh, covers a lot of uh, uh, ground here. You have all the fidgetability of a flipper, of a thumb stud on bearings, and a um, and the uh, fuller. You have a very excellent blade steel in 154 cm. You have an excellent and thin geometry for cutting and slicing. You have a knife that's big enough and capable enough uh, in a pinch to be used defensively, and um, and it's a knife you can. In, in good, can you can pull this out in good company and feel okay. And then not for nothing, here's something I like to uh, go into the main camera is this. You can hold it in reverse grip and flick it into reverse grip just using that fuller. I think that's cool. Uh, is there a use for it? Probably not, but hey, at least it's there. Okay, next up, uh, uh, I think the only, if not the only, it's one of only a very few, uh, Finch knives under a hundred buck. I love Finch knives, and this is one of my favorites. Uh, I know I say that about every Finch knife, so uh, maybe I need to watch that. But I, I really like this knife for its um, for some of its very unique um, aspects. First of all, it's one of the bigger Finches at uh, one, two, three and a quarter inches long, or almost uh, three and a half inches in blade length, and so you get a super smooth um, drop. And for such a small light knife, that's kind of unique to me to have such a, a guillotine action with such a relatively light blade. You see me shaking it in. I don't need to shake it in. I think it's because of the angle I'm holding it. What do I love about the Cimarron? You get the 154 CM blade steel. You get a nice length of, of blade. It's very sharp, uh, as you might expect. Uh, coming from Finch Knives. I love the flipper uh, because it's very low profile, but it also offers you a place with that jimping to rest your fingers if you need to choke up to use this thing. Great jimping on the back of the blade. I love the G10. Uh, there are four versions of this that I know of. This yellow and gray, there's Kelly green and blue. There's orange and like safety orange on the inside and, and uh, green on the outside. And then there's a black and red. And then they all have the luminous uh, badge. Uh, originally designed, I think, by Steve for uh, backpacking. And so uh, the colors are evocative of different backpacks that he's had and sleeping bags and such. And then just thin and super light and capable. And then the whole blade disappears into the handle. I love that, too. Um, sculpted titanium pocket clip. I think it's about 80 bucks. A great, great knife under 100 bucks. The last two knives here that I'm going to show off are classics, uh, but they need to be mentioned. Um, the Spyderco Endura. And of course, you can, uh, for under 100 bucks, uh, you can also go with the Delica. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're going for now, I, uh, uh, but I'm sure they've crept closer to 100 than when I bought these. Uh, but really excellent knives, tried and true engineering, um, and and you can get them in a number of different blade steels. Uh, but this is just the VG10. The standard model comes in VG10. It's always served me great. This one has done a lot of work around the house. Um, 
fully flat ground. This was the knife that kind of put full flat grind on the map, I think, with uh, nothing fancy, always talking about it and just going off on how great this knife is. Well, he was right. It is a great knife. It's got a classic backlock. And by the way, backlocks uh, don't get the credit they deserve. I know triads do, but even just regular backlocks are extremely strong. They're very, very strong uh, locking mechanisms. They're just not as fun to play with, uh, but you know, you can, you can make them fun. I, I find the cold steel, I find the triad lock uh, somewhat fidgety. Uh, but so let's not forget about our classics like the, like the spider co, uh, Endura. There are also a number of even less expensive, uh, spider co's that if you like the G10 with steel liners, uh, kind of setup, you can go for the, uh, the persistence and the tenacious and that whole line. So there, are, there is a lot, lot by uh, Spider Co. and by Bird their their budget line for under a hundred bucks, and you know you're going to get something uh, tried and true and very good from them. Last up is uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this knife for under a hundred bucks. Uh, though I don't think this will be my carry in Atlanta. It's the Voyager by cold steel this is a large voyage or this is a what how do they size these uh there's the xl this is the large that's the four inch blade it comes in this beautiful clip point comes in tanto comes in drop point that's the newest one the drop point i think has jimping on the blade which is kind of cool and it used to come in the vaquero they don't they don't make the four inch vaquero anymore why i don't know that doesn't make any sense to me that's madness uh but they have done that uh, this one is an older one. It's in OS 8. Now they're in OS 10A. And uh, great things about these knives, the blade shape, the full flat grind. Uh, they're very thin and slicey blades, but very robust. You have the triad lock, the strongest lock in the business, or one of them anyway. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's just one of the Demco locks is the strongest because he's the man. And he designed this, uh, but here, here you go. Here's the fidget factor of a cold steel, uh, because they are drop shutty. You just drop it and the tang drops onto your finger and then you just close it. Um, but this is of all of them, of all of the knives on the table. If I had to, you know, go out and survive with a knife, it would be this one. So big, thick in the hand, really, really strong also good looking also offers a number of different uh, uh grips if you had a lanyard on here you could choke back and use it in light chopping it's tough enough to take that you have your main grip here and then you have this area here you can choke way up without having a choil you, have, you just have that nice platform there you can choke way up for that kind of stuff so there you have it ladies and gentlemen these are the knives i've been considering and i've been thinking about under 100 bucks that I really love. Uh, and one of these is coming to Blade Show with me. Which one will it be? I'm not sure yet. It might just be the Preta 2. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, checking this out. Also, check out the Sunday show. Uh, we will have an episode on and from Blade Show. And uh, so that, that should be a fun one. It was fun last year, so I can't wait to see what happens this year. All right, so... For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thanks for watching. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.